Hi everybody, my name is James Markey and I am the bass trombonist of the Boston Symphony Orchestra and I would like to welcome you to this presentation of our BSO Homeschool series. In this particular presentation, we're looking at Rossini's, the excerpt from Rossini's William Tell Overture. And this is arguably the most challenging and certainly one of the most challenging excerpts for trombone or bass trombone. It's actually equally challenging for each instrument. And it's challenging for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, from just a basic uh, point of view of rhythm, you need to keep a good solid rhythm through it, through the long notes, a palpable sense, what we'd say a palpable sense of pulse. You need to be able to tell where the notes are gonna be coming. But even more importantly, or as importantly, is intonation and having really clear pitches. Now for trombone, that presents certain challenges. And what I want to do in this video is take apart those challenges, how to solve those challenges, or at least give you some ideas on how to practice to make your playing better on this particular excerpt. So as far as the, the intonation is concerned, when you're looking at a regular brass instrument, the other brass instruments, I should say, uh, since they are all regular brass instruments, we're looking at valved instruments. And for those instruments, when you press down a valve, the instrument is immediately at the length that it needs to be in order to create a pitch of a given level. The instrument is the right length to make that happen. With the trombone, because we move the slide, our instrument length is infinitely variable, and therefore it's very, very important for us to uh, really gauge where our slide needs to be in certain points. And I like to use a technique called anchor point practicing. And I don't know if singers uh, would call the technique the same way, but we can learn a lot from how singers would approach, for example, a chromatic scale. When a singer sings a chromatic scale, what they do is they will often look at certain reference points for when they're singing. If I'm going to sing a chromatic scale beginning on C, so here's Do, and I'm going to sing a chromatic scale, I'll either think of Do, Mi, a Mi flat, Mi, Fa, F sharp, La, Do. And so when I sing that chromatic scale, I'll go Da 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 or I could also think of every four notes, which would be do, mi, sol sharp, do, da 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 So that no matter what happens in the middle of the scale, I have these reference points that I'm finding my pitch. The same thing for trombone. When we take apart these scale runs, if we take them apart in a similar way, you can provide the listener with the stability that they that they expect. Because when they hear, when they perceive where the beat is, they actually hear a very identifiable and clear pitch. And how do we do that? We take this first run, this first chromatic scale we have, which starts on a B. I make sure I start on a B, which is actually on the second eighth note of the bar. And make sure that I end on a very clear D. And that beat, that D, is an anchor. And all the notes in the middle are the chain that link the anchors together, from one anchor to the next. The next group of that scale is... So when I put those together, I have the one piece of the bit of piece of chain in the anchor, then the next anchor and chain. You can see I've broken that scale in half. The first half from the B to the D, the next half from the D to the G. And when we put them together and put uh, separate them by one beat, we get and up. You can see the next group then would give us starting on a G and ending on a C. In the following group, the C followed by the last E. When we take a look at this as one long scale run, it's very challenging. But when we start to look at it as bits and pieces of scale runs, those we are going to do a much better job at managing. We generally tend to do a lot better learning simple things, things that are not as complicated. And this is how we break down this particular passage. So if we take a look at that first scale, then we have... What 
what we can do then is connect that into the next group. So we started off with the individual pieces. Now we're going to start to group those individual bits together. Here becomes then the next measure becomes or in the case of tenor trombone so the skill works the same way when we finally piece that together then we wind up having each of those segments is learned well and then finally we stitch it together with and I'm gonna put the put accents which don't exist but for your benefit I'm gonna put accents on each of those anchors so you can hear the pitches and I'm gonna go slowly and ha. So that when we ultimately put it together, that's exactly what we're thinking. Anchor, anchor, anchor. If I sing, and if I play, bam, Now, the this technique, this work that I did on the first scale, you would need to do on every scale because obviously the second scale has a little change at the end. From the first scale, the second scale ends. Now the third scale and the fourth scale are identical in terms of the notes in between. For those scales, I start off in seventh position. Why? Because I've started off in seventh position for the first two scale runs. Since I'm starting off with the B in seventh, I'll start off with the E in seventh as well. And then the last note here. So each scale needs to be worked on independently. Now one bit about how to approach slide technique with this excerpt. We generally have two kinds of technique when we play our slide, when we, when we use our slide. When we play notes slowly, we'll use what we, what we could say a notched technique, where you stop the slide at each position. And we do that when we play slow scales. But there comes a point when we want to go to a smooth slide where we're not stopping the slide at each note. When you're playing short, fast notes where you've got a note followed by a space, followed by a note, followed by a space, that's a great time to use what we would say a smooth technique where I'm not stopping my slide in between those notes. I'll take that same scale that I just played, notched, but now if I go smooth, that's not perfectly smooth, that's closer to smooth. Where a chromatic scale, that's where we really can see the smoothness. Now that was really sloppy. Let me do it one more time. That was better. It can be difficult to take faster technique, a, a smoother technique, and apply it slowly. But you can see in that case, as long as I've got my slide in about the right spot, it doesn't matter as much how the speed of the slide goes. Now you may have noticed a little bit of messiness right there in terms of uh, the intonation, which is right. It is. It was a little bit messy even that second time. But when we bring it up to speed, we lose that messiness. And what we gain instead is the facility that we need to move our slide. Because if we did stop the slide at each note, you'd wind up with... Which is very difficult to navigate. When we go smoother... That's how we are able to manage uh, the technique easier. The last thing that I mentioned is the importance of maintaining a consistent pulse through the long notes. And that's absolutely true. One of the things I'll do is put a metronome on 
and I'll keep that metronome going. But for this particular excerpt, I'll set it for the tempo that I want and have the tempo be on off beats. And I just so happen to have a metronome right next to me that I'm gonna turn on right here. And you can hear that pitch, that, that uh, speed. And how do we turn a metronome onto off beats? Ordinarily, we would think one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Well, in this case, we're not thinking one, two. What we do is we insert a three, eight bar. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And this general technique of using a metronome on the offbeats can be very helpful for some excerpts because it still requires you, it requires the performer to maintain the pulse on the beat. So that the metronome, it's so easy with metronomes to turn the metronome off and to, or to turn the metronome on and turn off your own internal sense of pulse. But when we put the metronome on an offbeat, we are still the ones who determine where the beat is. The metronome serves as the reminder for the subdivision, for the offbeat. And the way this works is we would go, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. helps me to perceive where the beat actually is through the long note. So it's not just a long note, but it's a long note with a rhythm that goes through it. And that's really essential. So when you put these together, all of these ideas, the idea of the of keeping a pulse through the long note, having good technique through, and breaking down every scale, you wind up with this excerpt in a nutshell. Now, the idea behind all of this work is to make it sound easy. This is not easy. It is, it is a difficult thing to do. Playing any instrument is a difficult thing to do because nobody was born with an instrument in their hands. It's always something you have to learn. And there's nothing natural about squeezing flesh between bone and metal in order to vibrate air to get a sound. That's not a natural thing to do. But if we simplify, if we break things down, if you work at this level and break things down and don't be afraid to go slowly with this technique, you have a good chance at actually making this, making your own performance of this very successful. So here it is one more time, this time without the metronome, and, and we're gonna see where we stand. So one moment to uh, empty my water. Yes, a lovely thing to do for a brass player, but there you have it. Here we are. Thank you and good luck.